So this presentation is uh, it's more of a story about the whole uh, cubic mission. I won't go into technical detail because actually this uh, whole journey uh, I think deserves at least four presentations of its uh, own parts. So we'll get a more of an overview of uh, what happened and how uh, it all started. So, the, not this August, uh, one year ago, uh, we got uh, like an uh, offer to have a one uh, P uh, pocket cube uh, to go to space. And uh, it was like, um, do you want this? And you have to get it ready quite uh quite fast so it was uh, mid-august and uh, we had to deliver a satellite by december um of course we were not uh, starting from scratch we looked at uh, what uh, subsystems we had ready or almost ready and uh, it turns out we had uh, a comms uh, which was uh, uh, a project that we were already working for uh pocket cube comms and uh, that's about it actually there was nothing more so we devised a plan um we would have to build the, the absolute bare minimum support hardware for uh, the satellite to exit make it all too big so it will become a pocket cube while we would find uh, an actual purpose uh, and the mission objective for uh, this hardware so it won't be like just a beacon in space. And uh, this was like the hardware and software plan that uh, came into action. Um, now this is like the end of August. The idea about the experiment that could be performed with uh, the hardware at hand is to attempt to um, uh, make some uh, RF transmissions that would allow us to determine the orbit and actually produce TLEs from the very uh, early stages of the deployment, like within the, I don't know, first hour or something. Um, to do that, uh, we would try to exploit uh, several aspects of uh, the beacons transmitted by the pocket tube. Uh, of course, there, there's the Doppler shift uh, that uh, the previous talk was about, and uh, we are going to exploit that, as well as, um, of course, decoding, decoding the data and uh, detect which satellite is which, as well as uh, um, trying to determine by the beacon interval or the preamble and postamble length of the transmission, um, and stuff like this. You can actually read the detailed um, description of the whole uh, aspect of the presentation in uh, of the of the mission in, the, in this link um meanwhile on the hardware there were stuff that needed to be built um in quite a fast pace so uh, there was an in initial power budget and uh, this called for uh, solar panels uh which were built up around the proven SPV 1040. And then we added an extra like power management chip that would uh, monitor uh, the battery and uh, deduce the capacity in the available charge, etc. And this was built around the um, MAX 17261 from uh, Maxim. Um, also the comms board would need a, a bit of modification because uh, uh it was never actually fitted to uh a full structure so uh, the antenna connector needed a bit of a reorientation and uh, also some uh, minor changes so it would communicate with uh, power management hardware and uh, in parallel there need to be like a structural design that would uh, fulfill the requirements for a satellite to go through all the all the tests uh, and uh, and then and then a release mechanism and of course 
all this had to be within the specs that uh, the deployer the deployer that it was gonna be into um, would uh, you know accommodate it properly um, so to optimize the whole process we actually came up with uh, a design that uses the PCBs as a structural element. On the left side, you can see an exploded view of the, um, the whole satellite. And uh, if you look closely, you can see that uh, these are the, um, the, the subsystems that are uh, all connected all together with um, uh, spacers and uh, these long bolts. And uh, for the actual rigidity of the structure, the, the PV panels snap into each other, uh, like in the picture on the right, and this forms a, a very rigid uh, structure. This is a view of the antenna deployment mechanism. Um, this uses the classic thermal knife uh, approach, which is a uh, I would say a glorified uh, resistor of incorrect wattage to produce enough heat to melt this uh, tiny wire that holds the antenna in place. Um, there had we have to do um, lots of tests about uh, about this mechanism, ensuring a slow motion mesmerizing video about uh, the, for a deployment. So we had to do lots of tests to make sure that uh, every possible scenario that this mechanism could fail actually be mitigated. Um, and uh, after many tests in a vacuum chamber, we came out with the value of 12. That's 12 ohms that this resistor should be there in parallel. and. Uh, both of them can release the, the antenna. Um, and then we get some news that we can actually, uh, instead of one, send two satellites, which is great because uh, they would be really, I would say, almost identical uh, in the transmissions that they would uh, be making. And uh, this would make the experiment um, harder, but more valuable uh, on the fact that uh, now if we could actually distinguish between the two of them, uh, this would be a, a great milestone. But there was some extra information about the deployer and uh, the extra info about the deployer was that it's more of a, more of a concept than an actual, you know, device and uh, we ended up that building also the deployer for the mission um, so there was a new plan which included uh, building a deployer from scratch and uh, there was actually a point where we were required to um, provide a mass simulator of what the deployer is uh, in respect of the center of mass. Uh, and we had to do that without the deployer being actually, without being in existence. Um, we did that to our best effort. And then in parallel, we also built the deployer. Uh, luckily, the mass simulator and the deployer were within uh, the tolerances that were acceptable by the launch provider. And uh, this was the birth of the Pico bus. So that's the deployer we built in a nice uh, C3PO gold color. Um, it has it can uh, house uh, up to eight 1P uh, pocket cubes into rails. Use constant force springs to eject everything out, and uh, utilizes thermal knives also to uh, release like the door mechanism and. Uh, this worked actually quite good, and uh, I think there are plans for this to be 
uh, an actual service by LibreSpace. Of course, this had to go through uh, vibration and uh, thermal campaigns, um, which happened uh, in uh, Madrid and Barcelona. And uh, back to the lab, the PCBs were getting ready for uh, for the satellite to be built. Um, you can see on the right, this is an inspection of the conformal coating that uh, was applied to all the all the circuits. And uh, here is a like a better view of how the whole structure comes together. Um, so as you can see, there are like uh, these. Uh, small frames that uh, help hold the four sides of the satellite in place, and all this provides uh, a really rigid uh, structure. And uh, actually, there was a spare uh, slot on the subsystems which would have to be populated by uh, a PCB. And since there was no subsystem that could uh, that was readily available to go there, we sent the LibreSpace uh, LibreSpace Foundation manifesto etched in a PCB. Um, you can see on the right there; uh, these are the two uh, pocket cubes fully assembled inside um, the clean box, ready to be integrated. Uh, of course, they had to go through protoflight campaign. So the new deployer, newly built deployer with uh, the cubic mission, as long as and also the, um, the rest of the, let's say, passengers, uh, went again for vibration testing uh, as the protoflight uh, campaign. And then there is the software side. Um, Luckily, there was a bit of extra time, so we moved on from uh, the, just the bare telemetry that would be needed for uh, the experiment. And uh, the software evolved uh, quite a lot, actually, because uh, we have a fully functional driver for uh, the transceiver chip. Uh, we implemented telecommand also. There is a finite state machine uh, that controls everything. There's a a new project that emerged uh, called Open Space Data Link Protocol that implements uh, uh, some CCSDS specifications for the um, communication. Um, and also, there is ground station uh, software for uh, controlling the satellite. Um, In addition, the development was done while being integrated, already integrated to the SATNOGS uh, network. So while we were uh, doing software testing and uh, the satellite itself was transmitting uh, the telemetry and there was a SATNOGS station uh, next to it and uh, it was receiving all the telemetry data that we will be getting once uh, the satellite is in orbit. Um, so. We're more than ready on that part, and that's, I think, quite new for uh, this type of missions. Finally, there was the integration. Uh, this is the final charge of the batteries before everything goes into the deployer and it's sealed uh, to be shipped to the launch uh, provider. And on the right-hand side, uh, this is the clean box where the whole integration happened. Um, there's actually uh, a full-length integration video on the LibreSpace channel if uh, one would like to watch it. And a few things about the, the launch itself. The launch was part of the um, dream payload uh, provided by uh, Firefly Aerospace. Uh, it would be launched on Firefly Alpha. Everything was arranged by um, FOSA systems, and uh, as it turns out, the Firefly Alpha rocket, it would, it will be actually its first launch. So, um, lots of unbuilt and uh, stuff being here, but 
so far it works okay. Uh, we really hope that uh, Firefly will not become a fireball. Um, and uh, the launch should happen, I think, um, early next year. I would like to thank the whole Cubic team and the people that helped uh, for uh, this mission to uh, become a reality. Um, I would, we would like to thank uh, FOSA Systems for arranging also for the facilities for the thermal vacuum and the vibration testing. And um, we're at the state now that we just wait for the lunch to happen and uh, we can finally come have some pizza. Thank you very much. About time to have some pizza. Awesome. Uh, so, I have some comments, not questions yet. Uh, well, uh, actually, there are some mentions about uh, the message we sent on uh, Libre Space uh, Manifesto Values. Uh, Banner Voyager style message for outer space. Yeah, but it won't last that much, uh, that long, actually. Um, actually, cool piece to give away. I have that noted. And others of us, I'm sure that we, they would like to uh, get their hands on that. Me too. I want that on my keys, man. Um, Oh, yes, uh, Kerel is a, uh, the repository that you people can check it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'm checking out any other questions that there might be. I don't see any questions yet. Uh, oh, yeah, I see Agis uh, that's uh, really excited about uh, your presentation uh, in YouTube. Uh, so, uh, I suggest the. Uh, no. So, I would like to say that uh, Jan said that it's a very uh, cool piece to give away. Maybe it's a good idea to have. Uh, some uh, boards printed and yes. give them or uh, give, give them away or uh, sell them for uh, I don't know, to have some uh, income for the next mission. We need to sell a lot. Oh, Red has the awesomest co-presenter, but he can't hear us. He's a uh, waiting for us to go to room one so stay off great talk ideas and uh, catch you soon bye bye let's go to room one go out i'm gonna uh, shut the lights off so i'm closing the air condition